Today's video is brought to you in 4K with the help of my friends at Elgato Gaming and their 4K capture devices. If you're interested in learning more, click the link in the description below. Last week, we took a look at Call of Duty World War II, what it was like in 2019, and honestly, your reception blew me away. For just a fun little retrospective video, you guys seemed to really like the discussion we had at hand, the look back, and all that came along with it. So I figured, while it is the weekend, we're chilling out until Modern Warfare, let's go back a little bit further. Let's take a look at today, Infinite Warfare, and what it's like today in 2019, and go just a little bit deeper down that rabbit hole. So, Infinite Warfare again, like World War II, had a complete package. Campaign, MP, zombies, something for everybody. Campaign and Infinite Warfare was actually, if you could accept the space theme of the game overall, honestly really good. I know a lot of people didn't really play it for various reasons, we'll mention that stuff a little later on in the video, but many people didn't, and truthfully, I think that it may have been that hidden gem of a storyline in the COD franchise. I won't spoil it, but Brian Bloom as Captain Nick Reyes, Sergeant Omar, Salter, Ethan, the whole cast and crew were just absolutely fantastic. Their performances for each character made for a gripping relationship built up in a short period of time, and the narrative that it followed was absolutely fantastic, at least I thought. All I'll say is that definitely give it a playthrough if you're looking for something to do if you haven't already, and especially with Modern Warfare, again, we're just killing time essentially until the launch of the game. It's certainly worth a playthrough if you haven't tried it out. MP, on the other hand, was something that offered an extension of the thematic play of the Black Ops 3 did with the wall running, thrust jumping, and things like that, but in a space atmosphere. We'll talk about some of the specifics that I really enjoyed after we talk about how it plays out today, but from the cinematics of the maps, the gunplay, the hit detection, the way DLC was handled, it was all pretty solid for those that gave it a chance. As for zombies, well, this was a more comical take on the zombies that we knew of thus far. It wasn't a full-blown horror style like we saw in World War II, or just the sort of arcade shooter that Black Ops 3 zombies kind of embodied. It was, in my opinion, a nice little refresher, though, to see something with a little bit of a different art style and direction than what we were used to. What I really liked was that it had a super easter egg, tying together the entire Infinite Warfare zombie storyline told thus far, and offering up some resolution for those that completed every easter egg that the game had to offer. But how does it play in 2019? That's the big question that we're here to answer and here to discuss. As for playlists, we end up seeing that when you jump on, you have the standard team deathmatch, free for all, domination, search and destroy, control mosh pit, kill confirmed and grind, gun game, infected and ground war, with other featured game modes of prototype drop zone, cranked, gesture warfare, tactical mosh pit, and others like the DLC mosh pit, hardcore modes, and of course the competitive mosh pit. And fun little fact is that even if you backed out to the main menu, you could have GB integration, game battles integration, which was competitive play built right into the game, which was really cool. But really, it was still a healthy helping of modes a few years after the game was not really supported all that much more. I found that your standard modes like TDM naturally are the easiest to jump into, and truthfully, I never had more than about a five second wait time for matchmaking. Once we got into those pregame lobbies and the maps would start to load in the background, that's a different story, but that's of course to be expected because that's just general game load times, not actually finding a match. As for the lobbies, I found some absolute bots in my game, man. I'm not gonna lie. I hadn't played Infinite Warfare in a few months before jumping on to get some footage that you'll see in this video, and to do some little research on just how it feels right now, right before the launch of Infinity War's next game, but there were definitely some interesting lobbies. They were definitely rather easy compared to what I remembered back in the prime. And of course, with recent games like Black Ops 4, World War II, I just remember seeing a lot more competitive play in those public matches than compared to what I played in TDM or elsewhere within Infinite Warfare thus far. Surprisingly, the player counts didn't really seem to be all that lower, at least whenever I played. Obviously, with recent generation games, we can't check exactly what those player numbers are like we could in the past games like, say, Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 3 that offered the global player totals right there on the main menu, but with this not being something that was readily available, I found that I could always get into games almost immediately. It could be because I was playing on a Saturday afternoon, which is likely a high traffic time for any game, not just Infinite Warfare game that may not have been played by all that many, but other things like hit detection felt surprisingly good, gunplay felt of course really good, and as we'll mention here in just a second, Infinite Warfare just had a lot of fluidity that felt good to play, if again you could get past that little space theme. As for updates to the game, Infinite Warfare hasn't had many updates in quite some time. I couldn't find the exact dates of the last content addition added to Infinite Warfare, but it's been kind of just left relatively 
as it is for quite some time. Not like World War II where we just had an update to add in weapons a couple of weeks to a month or two ago. Days and weeks start to just blend together now and it just feels like we're breezing past time. So I can't remember off the top of my head, but overall the game was truly a refreshing change of pace. Like we mentioned with World War II, there was a lot that kept me interested, a lot of things that I absolutely loved. Personally, I don't think that Infinite Warfare would be in those top two that I'd go back to play if I were to play any Call of Duty title in recent years. Again, I said that was probably World War II, Black Ops 3 maybe if I'm looking for a Jetpack era COD, but primarily World War II and Modern Warfare Master just because of how accessible they were to the player for all content. That was my big thing with all of that. But not many people gave this game any time of day, including myself whenever it was something that was brand new. There were likely various reasons as to why, personally mine came down to it felt so much like Black Ops 3, and I admittedly was just kind of burnt out on that game. By the time that Infinite Warfare came around, and to see that with no real updates until January, naturally with it feeling similar, I just wanted something else. I got a little bored. I know that many didn't because of the theme, that it was space, that it wasn't Call of Duty to them, and that's totally understandable, but whatever the reasoning is, it really didn't get a ton of love publicly. But like we've said here on the channel before, it really wasn't that bad of a game. When you look at it mechanically, it was perhaps the most fluid of the Jetpack era COD titles. It had some brilliantly designed maps, at least cinematically. I do have some issues with some of the flow design, but that's just personal gripes. It had a relatively fair system in place for DLC weapons and post-launch content. It had plenty of customizations. It had plenty of fan favorite modes and maps come throughout its lifespan. And sure, there were probably annoyances, but what game doesn't have that? Mechanically and overall, it really wasn't that bad. It was pretty solid. As for things that I absolutely loved, I love to be able to revisit this stuff also now that we're playing it again in 2019, just having some fun with it. The thing that I absolutely loved probably the best out of Infinite Warfare was the fact that there were season pass weapons and challenges for weapons that were introduced. We've talked about this here so many times on the channel that I wish that this would be something that returns in some capacity. Of course, we don't have a season pass this year, but the same principle of giving base weapons to all players and then the cosmetic or even stat changing variants in supply drops. As long as long as everybody has access to that base weapon, it's really not all that bad, I don't think. But you ended up getting weapons for free with a season pass immediately, or if you didn't have the season pass, that was totally fine. You could still work around that. You had challenges that would afford you the ability to get that, but it wasn't something that would be immediate. You'd have to grind out the game a little bit, do a specific challenge, but you got the weapon no less. Additionally, there were things like daily login bonuses with season pass bonuses also being applied as well. You ended up getting keys or salvage out of that, and that was something that, again, just progressed what you could get, either in supply drops or out of the armory, and which you could end up actually getting something specific that you wanted. The season pass actually had some value outside of just saving you five to 10 bucks long-term for the maps if you knew you were gonna buy all of them. Additionally, we mentioned it already, the armory had earnable items that you could just get things out of that salvage. You could get it in game for just simply playing. You also had other things like weekly contracts that really had decent yields most of the time. And sure, we didn't have daily like World War II, but it certainly was nice to be able to get something for just simply playing. A lot of things also like customization in terms of camos were really cool. I know that I had some exclusive ones that I absolutely loved. I didn't have a ton in terms of the ones that were in supply drops because I, again, didn't play all that much in its prime, therefore didn't unlock many supply drops. But whenever I would go to capture events out at Infinity Ward Studios, I just remember seeing all of them because they were all unlocked in the private matches we'd play and there were some really cool ones. But when you add all this in, you have some of the remakes that come into play in terms of maps. You have some of those classic weapons. You have just systems in place that really help the player just have a good time. It was really one that I wish that I would have played more. And again, like we've mentioned in the past, really doesn't make it all that bad of a game. But when you take a look at it again in 2019, it certainly is one that was refreshing. It was fun. If you missed that Jetpack era Call of Duty, some people may just completely be like, good riddance, and that's totally fine. But if you're interested in playing something to just kill some time and just change up what you were feeling, this felt really good. Between what all of what we said, the fluidity of the movement, the weapons in play, there's still a bunch of really cool weapons in that game. The hit detection is really solid. Again, the maps cinematically are fantastic, I think. But it's just something that if you do have some time to kill, why not give it a shot? I had a lot of fun with it and it still plays pretty nicely.
That said, that's Call of Duty Infinite Warfare in 2019. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Is there anything in particular that you guys really enjoyed out of Infinite Warfare that you thought were hidden gems? Maybe like that campaign, like I mentioned. Is there anything in particular you weren't really too fond of? Or whatever it may be, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare as we round into the launch of the game here. We're going to be ramping up the content. Of course, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. Mine is best for us. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.